Okay, um, we'll move straight on to our uh, next presentation. Uh, I'd like to, so we're going to have a duet, is that correct? Yeah. Yes? Okay. So um, I'd like to introduce uh, Bernadette McGahan and Jim Fitzsimons from Intertrade Ireland. And Intertrade Ireland uh, have a very interesting and relevant range of supports available for research and innovation. Um, so over to you guys. Thanks, Dennis. Oh, great. Slides up. So as Dennis said, this is a, a double act. And just before I came up there, I said to my colleague Jim, I says, we're like Fred and Ginger. He says, just don't call me Ginger. That's right. OK, that's fair enough. <laughs> um, so good afternoon, everybody. And um, thank you, Dennis, for the introduction to Intertrade Ireland. You will have heard earlier from the elevator pitch a little bit about what we're about. We're a, a cross-border body, and I hope you've had a chance maybe to get down to our stand to hear a little bit of information about the type of supports that we have. But the purpose of this talk here now is just to go into a little bit more detail about our innovation supports. Intertrade Ireland is about taking advantage of the opportunities that North-South collaboration presents. And we do this through a variety of initiatives. And as I said earlier, there are lots of companies throughout the length and breadth of the country taking advantage of the, the opportunity that North-South collaboration presents. We have had some 25,000 companies engage with us through support or advice. We've had in the order of 6,000 companies participate in our programs. And between these, they have mobilized and raised approximately 1 billion euros worth of trade and business development um, value. So we think this is what we're trying to get across is that there is a real value proposition to, to North-South collaboration. So as I said, the, the companies that we deal with, um, these are just regular companies, um, but I suppose what sets them apart is that they have ambition and they are willing to realize and pursue these cross-border opportunities to achieve growth. And there, last year, we have an initiative called our Business Ambassadors Program. And what we have done is to recognize some of the leading companies who have worked with us and give them the status of business ambassador because they are the ones who are out there promoting the benefits of cross-border cooperation. And if you can just see there on the map, I know it's probably a little bit small, but we have supported companies in each of the 32 counties. And that's important, I think, to get across because there is a perception that Intertrade Ireland is a Northern Ireland body. That's not the case. We are a body that operates across Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. We can fund businesses in each of the counties on the island of Ireland, and th that's important to get across. So we're particularly proud that our business ambassadors are drawn from each of the 32 counties. So as I said earlier today, I want to talk a little bit about our supports. And I'm going to be very focused on the innovation ones. But this slide will give you just some kind of an indication of the breadth of supports that we do offer. And they're grouped into kind of three main categories. So in terms of intelligence, funding, and, and contacts. And um, as I said, there's, there's lots of literature down in our stand if you want to get some, some information about maybe the, the broader trade supports that we have. But today, we'll, we'll focus a little bit more on the innovation side of things. So in his opening address this morning, Minister English spoke about the importance of Horizon 2020 and urged you all for your participation so that Ireland can win big in this program. And I suppose really it's the international component of Horizon 2020 that makes it an attractive opportunity for North-South cooperation. In fact, it's ideally suited. And it would be right to say that over the years and for the however long the European research programs have been running, there has been a level of, of north-south cooperation. But in 2010, it was probably with the arrival of Minister or of Commissioner Gagan Quinn to the, to the scene, that the governments realised that we probably should be doing a lot more of this. 
we are an island, but we have two member states. We've got two jurisdictions on one island. So it makes sense to cooperate. And so in 2010, the, the governments of both jurisdictions said, OK, let's try and pursue this a little bit more for mutual benefit. I think mutual benefit is, is the key word, particularly when it comes to these European programmes. If we work together smartly and efficiently, we can, be, we can help each other. So as I said, there, there is a history of collaboration um, in the past, um, and that's something that we want to build upon. And I suppose in the early days when we had found out when we were going out talking to a lot of companies that there is a perception that perhaps collaborating with your most immediate neighbour is somehow less, fa less favoured or less preferential to collaborating perhaps with another um, entity from another member state. But clearly, that is absolutely not the case. Um, we know, for example, that there are practical benefits and there's ease of working together on a north-south basis is evident, not least of all that the ease of travelling up and down the road to meet your potential partners to have whatever meetings or address whatever issues that there are, and plus as well the lack of having a lack of language difficulties. Now, you might say it's hard to understand the accent, but, you know, technically we all speak English. Well, try anyway. Um, but apart from all of that, the evidence speaks for itself. And you can see, you can see there from, from that slide that if you look over at the far side, after 2010, when there was a concerted effort put in to try and drive north-south collaboration, we actually had a good spike in the number of applications. So if you can see, it jumps from 116 to 244. So it shows that there is potential there, and um, these are all very positive things that we want to build upon. And some of the main areas for north-south collaboration are obviously health, Marie Cure. We heard a little bit about that. I think Sean McCarthy spoke earlier about the RISE programme and Marie Curie and how it's possible to have an industry in the south collaborate with one of the universities in the north, be it the University of Ulster or Queen's University Belfast. So there are huge opportunities in the programme for that. But more importantly, the, the line at the bottom shows you that this type of collaboration is working. It's been of mutual benefit. So over the, the term of the FP7 program, North-South collaborative projects took in some 89.2 million into the island in terms of research funding. That's a phenomenal amount of money. And it's something that we're obviously trying to build upon now in Horizon 2020. But of course, we're now in Horizon 2020, and ambitions are greater. The minister referenced that. In Ireland, they have um, set down a target of 1.25 billion. In Northern Ireland, that comparable target is 145 million. And because we're all pushing for, for North-South, they thought, well, why not set a North-South target? So the target for that is 175 million. So if you remember back from the last slide, FP7 drew in 89 million. We're now looking to up that to 175. So there will be a huge effort put on the ground, but I think it's a prize worth, worth aiming for, again, on the principle of, of mutual benefit. Okay. So one of the things there, if you look on the right, as I said, Horizon 2020 is only in its infancy, and th this is early data. This is data for the first six months of the programme. Um, and what we're seeing is that there is a good start to Horizon 2020. In the first six months, there has been 8.8 .8 million worth of uh, competitive funding drawn into the island. There have been um, seven projects. But I want to draw your attention to the idea of coordinators. Sean McCarthy mentioned this morning um, about coordination and that how intensive a task it was and was really onerous and heavy duty stuff. But I suppose the point to make here is that there are people here doing that and, and Sean was very clear on that. Certainly the universities have a huge expertise in that. And what's encouraging from this data to see is that we have lots of capable coordinators in Ireland and Northern Ireland. And as a result of that, we're getting north-south cooperation by design rather than just as a happy consequence of a project that's been organised elsewhere. So that's something, again, that we want to, that we want to build upon. And so for, for Intertrade Ireland's perspective, what we see our role is as supporting the, um, the two support systems in Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland to try and work together again and to try and drive north-south participation. 
what we will try and do to kind of stimulate that along is to provide opportunities for uh, for north south engagement to support north south um, participation and um, development all of that kind of stuff and then just general information provision um, we hold a series of focus on events and again this is about the uh, you know providing the opportunities for north south to engage so we do have your more kind of general purpose type events where there's an opportunity maybe to learn a little bit more about particular calls that are coming out in the the program and they're also an opportunity to meet with potential collaborators from the other side of the border we also try and do a lot more targeted events and these are probably for you folk out there who can have a specific call or a topic in mind and um, what we do try under those situations to try and get very small groups of uh, groupings together that are going for a particular call topic providing i suppose early intelligence on the details of those calls and also providing an opportunity to meet and to have preliminary discussions with potential partners and we try and go out and try and make you aware of those opportunities, but equally we want to be responsive to your needs. So if anybody has an opportunity that they're looking to progress on a north-south basis, please do come and talk to us down at the stand or, or contact us through, um, through email. And we'll certainly put the resources in place that need to be put in there to help you advance that opportunity on. Um, Again, Sean would have mentioned earlier that we're at the stage of the Horizon 2020 programme where the, the next set of work programmes are coming out for 2016, 2017. So it's a good opportunity for you if you haven't already done so. So just to look through those um, call documentation, find out where there are opportunities for you, come talk to us and we'll certainly help um, facilitate partnerships. And I, suppose I want to be clear as well that we're not trying to um, force marriage on, on anybody here. This is about partnerships where it makes sense. It's not about forcing partnerships for the sake of it. These things have to make sense to you and to your business. And where they do, there's where we will help you. Um, I want to, the, the last note there is just about the type of events that we have. Um, this one in particular relates to the Marie Curie programme and it involves SFI funded research centres meeting their counterparts in, in Northern Ireland with again with a view to stimulating activity. So we'll do all kinds of things to try and, and promote North South cooperation. Um, I'm just getting my, my sign here. So we do have other incentives to drive um, cooperation in terms of whether it's supporting early stage partnerships, supporting existing partnerships. These are little travel grants. Now we know these are not going to be the things that decide whether you do a Horizon 2020 application or not. We're very clear on that. But what these supports are, I suppose so just to remove the barriers, make life easier. If you want to support, if you want to go visit somebody in the other jurisdiction to explore potential, we'll help you. We'll fund your travel expenses. Right, it's not, it's not a huge big amount of money, but it's removing a burden, it's removing a barrier. Another type of support we have is the EU travel grants, something slightly, um, slightly different. It's for where there are existing North-South collaborative partnerships. And this type of grant will support that partnership to go out to Europe and to, you know, to meet, maybe to attend information days, brokerage days, attend consortium meetings. These meetings are really important because it gives you a chance to go out there, maybe meet people, get early intelligence, um, just give yourself a little bit of an advantage. And again, these aren't going to be the reason why you decide to engage in a Horizon 2020 programme, but again, just a little bit about removing the burden. Um, one of the new parts of the programme is, I suppose, the Commission's desire to see a lot more of an integrated approach. And by that, they want to see a lot more involvement of the social sciences and humanities and arts people involved in particular um, programmes. And to the degree that you know and are known by people. That was our motivation for compiling this resource called the SSH resource. So in that, it's a navigable document that's on our website. You'll be able to find access to all of the leading SSH researchers on the island. Um, we have lots of other uh, supports and advice there you know, to provide information. I suppose the, the one that I would draw maybe your attention to is our Horizon 2020 app. Again, you get details of that down at our stand, but it's a, it's a really useful tool to help you navigate calls. We actually had a, a guy from a, a company down at the stand there and we were telling him about the app 
And he said, okay, well, let's see this thing working. So we typed in one of his areas of interest and up popped up a load of potential calls that he might be able to go for. And again, that's probably the use of these things, you know, just little hints and tips to try and help you see where the opportunities are in Horizon 2020. So I think what I will do is I will leave it to, to Ginger to come up and give the second part of the talk. But if anybody wants any more details, our contact details are there. I'm sure the slides will be made available afterwards. Or please do come down and visit us at the stand. Thank you. I'd, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dennis and Colin for the opportunity to come and talk to you. One look at the top of my head will tell you why I'm reluctant to be called Ginger. But anyway. We, we, we better get going. Um, Minister English and Sean McCarthy earlier referred to the importance of SMEs to the Irish economy and the need within funding bodies to, and, and within academia to increase the involvement of SMEs in, in research. Darren Morrissey equally, along with the Minister, talked about the excellent science uh, and the excellence of Irish research. But more relevant to me was the fact that Sean McCarthy referred to this, had this lovely slide where he, he showed the differences between academics and SMEs in terms of the priorities. He referred to that thing called Death Valley. Uh, I, I tend to refer to it slightly differently. If, you, if you'll forgive me misquoting completely that author of self-help books, John Gray, academics are, are from Mars and SMEs are from Venus. And the entire rest of my talk will be geared around uh, trying to populate that debt valley and enabling both the SMEs and the um, academics to bridge that little gap. So I'm going to talk primarily about Fusion. Fusion is a small program run by Intertrade Ireland and it, it serves as an ideal introduction to two or three things. Firstly, it allows a company and an academic to engage for the first time. It's a relatively small project that can have a big impact uh, on a company uh, and, and an academic. Uh, but secondly, it gets them into this mode of generating claims and, and doing a collaborative research project together. The project is centred centered around a increasing the technical capability of a company, a company comes to us with a technical hole. That company is then partnered with a college and a recruit is put into the company and their job is to transfer that capability from the college into the company. And although there are benefits in terms of capability building and in terms of increased relevant relevance to industry and in terms of fast track career development for each of the different parties involved, the fundamental emphasis of Fusion is to increase the technical capability of, of the company. It's available to any SME north or south of the border. We've put together roughly 600 of these projects over the last 12 years. Uh, we placed roughly 600 graduates in companies, roughly on the basis of two-thirds in the south, one-third uh, of the companies in the north. An SME, as somebody's already said, is anybody uh, with up to 250 employees. It tends to be harder to get a fusion project funded if you have less than 10 employees, uh, and, and not that many of the larger SMEs are involved. So the vast majority of, of, of fusion projects are funded for companies somewhere between 20 and 100 employees. The, for, for the academic, uh, or, or a benefit to the academic, our consultants go out to the companies and <coughs> they vet the companies in terms of do they have a technical need? Secondly, do they have uh, a, 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 do they have the financial capability to fulfill their end of the project? So by the time we get to finding the academic partner, we've already vetted that company. Typically, the projects are used for anything from developing new products, a specific product, or formalizing innovation procedures within a company, improving processes, 
uh, it doesn't have to be rocket science. The vast majority of these projects are very applied in nature. They have a, even with the flimsiest connection between the academic and the company, they have the capability to have a very large impact on the company. We've done some studies over the last 12 years, and in terms of in return on investment, it tends to have a 16 to 1 return on investment uh, from the point of view of the company over the five or six years after the project completes. The support package is there. The support package is based around separate supports for the company and the college. We support roughly half the proportion of the salary of the graduate. There's a training and development budget and there's a travel budget. The college is supported in three ways. There's a travel budget. You'll note the travel budget for the college is, is far higher because we would very much see the co college traveling to the company to do these projects. The college is also paid to fill in the application form, therefore reducing the administrative load on the company. The third thing, having supported the company and the college, that the uh, the program consists of is we put all the graduates through a postgraduate diploma in business and management that takes place over a number of weekends. That's a level nine diploma. And you end up hiring a graduate. That graduate marriages or manages a large project for the company over a 12 or an 18 month period. During that time, that graduate who's invariably a technical graduate ends up getting tra trained in business and you end up with a graduate that's much more useful to the company at the end of that project. Uh, the benefits to the company are fairly evident. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna run over these last couple of slides. Um, the benefits to the academics are, are equally relevant. Both get a chance to work on a collaborative project together. The academic gets experience of working with industry. The company gets experience of working with academics and with managing a large scale, a, a relatively complex research project. And very often that has led to much larger projects of the types that Sean and some of the other speakers have spoken to here, about here today. If you look over the last 12 years, in booms and in busts and in time subsequent to busts, approximately 70% of those recruited end up staying on with the company for at least a year after the project completes. Um, if you want to find out a little more about any of these projects, just contact us. The one thing I haven't said to you is the marriage, because it's a cross-border funding agency, is between a company on one, in one jurisdiction and the college in the other jurisdiction. So Southern Ireland companies are matched with Northern Ireland colleges, whether they be universities or regional colleges. Northern Ireland companies are matched with Southern Ireland universities and Southern Ireland institutes of technology. Are we okay, Sylvia? <laughs> Thank you very much for your time.